Happy full. Oh, wow. This was so satisfactory. And I'm sure so is this. Stone cold beer. Damn, that's good. This is Neumark. Very, very cheap beer, yet very good. Quite, quite decent. With a bit of an undeserved reputation. They call it the construction worker guy's beer. Around these parts. Due to its price, but uh, Not all cheap things are bad. Just as not all expensive things are good. Yeah. This is a good tripod. And this is a very good beer. Confidently bitter. Very powerful taste. Very manly. Very decidedly unapologetic taste quite bitter, as I already said, with a bit of a metallic aftertaste, somewhat sharp and harsh, but uh, all in all, it's a really great beer, great Pilsner. Despite its price, this bottle can be had for around 50 euro cents. Welcome to another Lens Review, this is Radu, and this, this is the Canon FD 50mm f1.4, the SSC version. This is the subject of today's video. A wonderful, wonderful lens. It really is, it's a, it's a great lens in most if not always imaginable with just a few shortcomings of which a few are just personal gripes and very decidedly nitpickings the 50 millimeter 1.4 oh from canon comes in many many variants i have here the all metal all glass construction well i think this uh, mount locking ring is aluminium but other than that i think everything else is just brass and glass very chunky very hefty quite a bit of weight there's no two ways about it this is not a light nor is it a small lens Made starting in 1973 with an optical construction of seven elements in six groups with eight slightly rounded aperture rings and an aperture system starting at wide open at f1.4 and all the way close down to f16. A minimum focusing distance of 45 centimeters rather large 55 millimeter front filter thread and weighing in at a hefty 305 grams you will kindly excuse my profuse sweating we're in a bit of a heat wave around here it's friday afternoon just finished work and it's still around 38 degrees celsius is it now let me just check yeah, 35. Well, it feels hotter than that. It's really, really warm. There's supposed to be quite a bit of rain coming the next few days. But until that comes, there's just heat. Now, um, I bought this lens, despite the fact that I have several other 50s, despite the fact that I have 
Yet another 51.4, a brilliant, brilliant Konica Hexanon AR, 50, 50 millimeter f1.4, reviewed here on the channel. I think I'm gonna get the corner right this time. Is it this one? Probably not, but check one of the corners and do watch that review if you're, in, if you're interested. Now, despite having several other 50s, I got this lens because I wanted, well, that other 50 is radioactive and I don't like keeping it on my camera for much longer than I need to. I wanted something that can live on my camera. I wanted a go-to 50 millimeter. To spoil things a bit, this, although wonderful, spectacular, absolutely beautiful in many ways, is not it. It's not my go-to 50 millimeter lens. Stick around, watch the entire video to find out why exactly. The answer may surprise you. I'm going all clickbaity and stuff. I think I deserve another sip. Now, the Canon FD was a system introduced in 1971 and there were two major lens generations with subdivisions. The first series was called the Chrome Nose because of the chrome filtering. They were the lenses to introduce the breech lock FD mount that replaced the older FL mount. The second series replaced the silver filtering with a black ring and engraved coating type on the beauty ring with SC in white or SSC in red. These abbreviations stand for spectra coating and super spectra coating respectively. That bit of uh, history out of the way. Let me just uh, start talking about image quality and to sum things up quickly before I uh, take a bit of a more in-depth dive into things. This lens is really fantastic. It's really great. Perfectly decently sharp, wide open. Unlike many other 50s, unlike many other 51.4s to be precise. It has this sort of glowy, shiny, quality, wide open. Some may view that as a flaw, but I personally like that, especially with black and white. It gives images a very pleasant, very almost magical quality. Highlights glow. They appear to be shiny, as if made out of metal, like a silvery, very, very pleasant quality. Very suitable for black and white work. I love, I love using this lens for monochrome. So starting at f2.8 already, but even more so once you get over the f4 and f5.6 marks, this lens comes into its own. Image quality improves dramatically very contrasty, very punchy. The vignette that this lens exhibits wide open, but then again, which lens doesn't, is practically gone. So are basically all kinds of flares and imperfections. This lens is pretty much perfect at f8. One can make the case that most lenses are, and one would be right. That's why I test and shoot my lenses basically always wide open, as was the case with this one. Most of, if not all of the images you're seeing in this video are shot wide open. Firstly, because I love shooting lenses wide open. I'm paying for a 1.4, I wanna shoot it at 1.4. There are a few occasions when I want corner to corner sharpness and that's when I close down the lens. 
But other than that, I want a decent lens wide open. And this one is exactly that. Quite decent, very serviceable, excellent for portraits. Really, really splendid. Depth of field blur. This renders amazing blur in the autofocus. Fantastic for portraits. Fantastic for anything human oriented. Really beautiful for a quasi close up work. Very beautiful in the way it allows you to separate the subject from your background. The background blur is most of the times buttery smooth, like a fairy tale. It, it's magical. It, it's, I keep using hyperboles, but to be honest, they're not far from the truth. At times, the bokeh can get slightly nervous, somewhat jittery and busy, but most times it's just perfectly smooth. It's just fantastic. I mentioned black and white, and although it's my, I can almost call it my thing, black and white street photography, I do enjoy shooting in color. There are things that are better seen in color, and this lens produces really beautiful colors. Although a bit warm, colors are still very natural. They're elegant in a way. They do have a very lively resonance, very pleasant levels of saturations. They're not over the top. They're not overbearing. They're not those kind of nuclear radioactive colors. It's very, very pleasant, very, I would say toned down, but at the same time, colors are, as I've already said, they're saturated, they're vivid, lively, they're punchy, they're beautiful. It's really, really a great lens for any sort of color work. Now, as far as flaws, this lens has just a few of them. There's some geometric distortion in, in the, the way of uh, barrel distortion wide open, but that alongside with uh, vignetting it exhibits wide open is very trivial to fix in post-production. There's some flaring and very slight ghosting when shooting this lens directly into a strong source of light. But on the other hand, the flares this lens produces are really, really beautiful. Not all lenses produce attractive flares. This one does. The flares can be used creatively. They're beautiful to look at. They're very interesting. They're, they're really, really useful creatively. So uh, I tend to see flares more of a perk and the plus rather than a negative or a minus. As far as construction goes, I did touch upon this a bit earlier, but uh, I do want to stress this lens is built wonderfully, mid 70s production. It is bound to last a lifetime if not several. I got mine from Japan in, in a very, very beautiful condition, close to mint, excellent optics, just the slightest amount of dust, absolutely no fungus, absolutely no haze or separation. This lens is just pristine. And I got it for $50, excluding shipping. It was about 80 with shipping, everything included. But yeah, crazy, crazy cheap for an excellent construction. Solid piece of engineering, very precisely made. The focusing ring turns really smoothly and precisely, allowing for very confident focusing 
although it's a bit well it's not stiff but uh, you do have to put in a fair bit of force when turning it it's certainly not one of those lenses where you can use a single finger to focus it it's kind of difficult to turn i'll just leave it at that the aperture ring clicks very confidently each half stop on the whole range which is rather nice to have but uh, it, it, it's a bit fiddly at times i uh, did uh, miss a click or two it, it's rather fiddly to get your aperture right but then again you can just park it at f1.4 and uh Good luck focusing, but other than that, park it at f1.4 and just shoot it there. Or rather, park it at f8 and be there. It's what they say, right? Regarding street photography. f8 and be there. I should make a video with that title. f8 and be there. Hmm. Now the heft. This is where I start talking about a few of the things I don't like about this lens. The main thing is its size and weight. Couple it with the lens adapter. Put a hood on it. extended to minimum focusing distance and this lens is both long and heavy and i like small short and light lenses this is why this is not my go-to 50 millimeter it is probably alongside with the conic I mentioned earlier, my best 50 millimeter. But I will always and do trade in a bit of tiny bit of image quality for a great bit of uh, reduction in size and weight. That's why I use a Sony mirrorless that's why I like smaller, compact light lenses. Because I like to travel light. Hmm. Have you seen that movie? Being this long and this heavy, it kind of messes up the balance on my camera. It's a lens I go to when I want really, really great image quality and I care for nothing else. But if I'm out and about shooting street photography, having a few beers on the way, just minding my own business with a camera strapped to my back or uh, my neck or whatever. It's not really the lens I go to. It could be the Carl Zeiss Jena Tessar 50mm f2.8. The thing on the camera right now, the one you're th seeing me through, it can very well be this Pentacon 30 millimeter f3.5, a lens I'm going to review next. Small, very messed up on the front element, but great otherwise. It can be the Indostar, it can be the Konica 40 millimeter. That about sums it up. The Canon FD 50 millimeter f1.4. The SSC version, really great image quality, excellent construction, built to last several lifetimes. Sadly, not my go-to lens. It's gonna stay there in my collection, at least for the foreseeable future. But uh, whenever I'm going out to shoot with a 50, I'm probably gonna choose other 50s. 
This has been Radu. It has been a really sweaty Friday afternoon. Thank you for being here. If you want to support my channel, if you find the content here enjoyable, and if you want to see more of this, please do consider supporting my work here. By far, the most helpful thing you can do is to click like, watch this in its entirety, share it with your friends. You can also subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for of future uploads. There's also a buy me a coffee link down below if you're so inclined to make a small, rather large donation. Yes, please, thank you. That said, see you next time. Bye bye.